I've had it, I've lost it, I've found it, I've lost it again, and I've got it back. Hey guys, and a huge welcome back to my channel. So not only is Sexy Series back, but it's back with a sponsor, which feels incredible to me because it means that the feedback you guys are giving is making it have such a great response that other people want to join in and share their message. So I'm really excited to be teaming up with the lubricant I have used for the last five years, KY Jelly. And this video is going to be all about how to get your spark back. I've had it, I've lost it, I've found it, I've lost it again, and I've got it back. Life is not a straight line, and I'm gonna give you the tips that I've found that worked really successfully to keep your relationship healthy and happy. Let's be honest, life has got a little bit crazy and sometimes overly busy. And that can mean that our own intimacy and self-pleasure takes a massive back step. I mean, just add in your work life, the friends and family members that wanna see you, staying on top of your gym, food, fitness-based goals, not to mention if you have children or anyone else that relies on you, and boom, there are no more hours for you to even contemplate thinking about self-pleasure or even sex. And I think this has become very normal, but when you watch it on the media and when you see it online, it's it's like everybody is having this incredible spark and sex life, but we're only seeing the very beginning of a lot of people's relationships. And if you've made it past the honeymoon period, most of us are going to go through a bit of a funk due to life just taking its course. Becoming a parent has really affected our spark. We don't have any independence anymore. The spontaneity has definitely gone. We can't just decide to go and do things on a whim or to lay in bed all day. Everything requires other people's help, which I hate because I hate putting other people out, which means it's generally just the two of us. And sometimes you need to actually be able to look the other person in the eye to get that spark back. I'm not just talking pleasure as in sex, I'm talking pleasure as in just enjoying the other person's company, looking at them, feeling that spark of energy and wanting to kiss them. And if you're not able to sit down and stare at your partner's eyes and converse with them while feeling like you're actually in the room instead of thinking about the millions of other things you've got to do, it's really hard to stay connected and feel like you are in love. This next part might sound harsh, but if you found yourself saying similar or thinking similar, then you're probably in the same boat as where I have been. I've said to Leon quite openly, I love you, but I don't feel in love with you. I love you, but I don't wanna have sex with you. I love you, but for some reason, I don't feel like I want to rip your clothes off. Or sometimes when we go to bed, I just don't want you to touch me. These things are really harsh to hear when they come from the other person and when he says things like that to me, of course it hurts. But the key benefit here is the communication, the fact that we're able to say these things to each other, which prevents us from going down a line of not talking, not making it work and breaking up. When you say and have good communication lines, you're able to say this stuff and try and fix it together. But I have come up with some amazing tips with Leon, which we have used for the last couple of years. We've been together 10 years. These have worked really well for us to bring back the spark. So I'm hoping it will do the same for you. My first tip is you've got to get that love drug back. So remember when you first met and you had those butterflies and like the hot sweats and you just felt in lust for that other person? Well, that is a love drug produced by your own body. It's called dopamine and it's an incredible hormone. You also get it when you go into labor, but that's a little bit different. So I'm aware that some of us have no money and kids. So let's take it back to basics. During nap time or when they've gone to bed, why doesn't one of you cook the first course? The other one cook the second and then the two of you cook the dessert. It's a really nice way to get tactile with each other, to spend time in the same environment. You're hopefully going to have a giggle and food is always the way to most people's hearts. If you can go out and do something then perhaps try an activity together. Go salsa dancing where you actually get up close and personal and are learning something together. Or perhaps go to a drive out where you can watch a movie in your car so you can still get a little bit hot and heavy while you're out in public. <laughs> Next up is kissing, and I can't lie, it sucks that the longer you're with someone, the less you kiss. And it might be that you're still kissing, but are you doing deep kissing, the kind of kissing you did when you first met? You know when you used to meet and you'd kiss so much that your lips would kind of feel a little bit swollen and then you'd get a beard rash across? That wasn't attractive, but it was proof that you'd just been kissing so much because you were just so, oh, with each other. Well, that does tend to go with time, which sucks. 
So you might not feel like it and I don't want to force you into doing it, but go back to kissing. And I'd actually say ladies or gentlemen, whoever's listening to this, make the first move. So if you don't normally make the first move and there is always one of you in the couple that will always be the first to initiate. Try and be the one that initiates yourself and show them how you like to be kissed. Because too often we just go for the generic kiss, but maybe you have a style or a way of moving or a pressure or a way of being held that really turns you on. So for me, I love to kiss someone, but I don't want them all up everywhere. I want like a really beautiful kiss oh, and all of the tactileness. And it, you know, you have to educate them into this. So get back to kissing. Number three is one of my favorites because it takes it back to basics. Turn off the TV, turn off the music, just sit facing each other in the living room, which can be a little bit daunting if you don't like eye contact, but you can always have like a strawberry or something to munch if you're feeling a bit awkward, um, and just reminisce about how you met. And when I say how you met, not the typical story that you tell your friends and family, Talk about what you were thinking and feeling about that person during that time. So one thing I didn't know, Leon had seen me way sooner than I had seen him and he used to fantasize about the tights that I was wearing when I went to work because I always had these tights that had like bows on the back. Do you remember when tights were cool and they had like graphics on? I wore those with like a black work dress and he used to fantasize about those. I didn't know that so when he was telling me this I was like, oh my gosh, like he really wanted me and that is so sexy. So sit and talk about your feelings and how you felt about the person and the things that you wanted to happen and maybe like your fantasies during that time and watch as you kind of go back to that age or that period of time and just feel the spark between the two of you. It's such a lovely thing to do. Don't do it too often because you don't want to wear it out but it's definitely one to do when you really feel like you just haven't got a connection anymore. This next one is fun and something I love to share and get people to do. So I want you to get two pieces of paper or you can use your phone and then I want you to do one to ten, clear your head and just write down all the sexual possibilities that come into your mind. So it might be like sex with food, sex with my partner and a friend, it might be sex in public, it might be I want to use lube, which sounds crazy because this is so normal to a lot of people, but to a lot, we're so conscious that we think if we use lube, our partner's going to think that perhaps they're not turning us on enough. And oh my gosh, guys, if there was a t-shirt or a slogan, I would shout it from the rooftops because there are so many reasons why you may or may not be wet during a certain intimate act. And it shouldn't make you feel like the other person's not working hard enough or like you're broken just because you're not as wet as they expect you to be. Oh my gosh, hormones, menopause, stress, postpartum, medication, a million things can change your wetness down here. So do not panic. Pop it on your list if you think that they're going to be like, Lube, really? Hold on, am I, am I not doing this for you? No, actually, I just really like to be really soft and smooth and lubricated when we have sex because it actually feels a million times better. So you can write all those down and then one to five. So one being, uh-uh, not going to happen. Five being, yes, I really wanted to try that. And you might find on your list of 10, because be in mind, it might be 20 when you both put them together that you're like, yeah, to so many things that you have not wanted to express the other person that you've wanted to do. And yes, there'll be some that are like, uh, and you might be like, phew, I've never wanted to do that. So it's a really nice way to open the forum, to have the communication to talk about what you do and might not want, and to kind of see if you're both on the same page and then you can explore it together. This one's a biggie for me and I think has been a huge reason as to why my sex life has taken dips nosedived and then come back up again. Men generally are spontaneous and women are situational. We generally have a way that makes us feel sexy and we want to have sex. Men could pretty much do it any time and I love that about men but that's not how a lot of us women generally work. So for me let's talk self-pleasure. When I want to self-pleasure myself no one else is in the house. Jack certainly isn't running around and Leon isn't doing the dishes downstairs. I am alone, I am free, I've probably had a shower or I'm about to have a shower and I'm de-stressed, I'm not halfway between a workload. So let's team that into pleasure with a partner. If every time you go to bed they try it on and you hate it because you just wanna to go to bed, I'm a mom. When I go to bed, I wanna sleep because I don't know when Jax is gonna get up and I'm thinking, oh, I've got a PT session at like 6 a.m. I don't wanna have sex. So think about the situation that makes you want to be intimate. Maybe you need a shower, maybe you need them to have rubbed your back, to have a foot massage, to have some food, you just need an empty house or maybe you just need like 10 minutes to just get yourself back in the moment. 
think about your situation and when you know what it is that turns you on, you're far more likely to be able to recreate that and then find the zone that makes you wanna be doing that more often. And the last one is getting in touch with your own sexuality. I don't think many of us have asked ourselves, what do we actually want? And this doesn't have to mean sex. This can mean like, how do you want to be touched? How do you want to be kissed? How do you want to be romanticized? How do you want to be intimate with someone? If you don't know that and you're always jumping to this idea of how sex has to be and how intimacy has to be, but you don't know what it is that you like about it, how can you want to do it? It becomes a job. So I definitely recommend having some self-exploration, spending some time with your own hands before you invest in getting loads of tools. Your hands are the most incredible things and just massage your skin. Be kinder to yourself when you're in the shower and think about how your touch feels. Think about what you do or don't like. And then when you really understand your own body, then you'll be able to show your partner what you do and don't like, which then makes them feel far more in control too. And that is the same with situations such as lube. It's taking care of yourself first and the kind of situation you want to be in and how you want to feel. Yes, you can totally have sex and be intimate with someone without using lube, but I think it's knowing your own self-care. For me, I use this. I know I feel better, I'm more comfortable, there's no chafing, I don't have to worry about does he think I'm wet, am I not wet enough, I know this feels good and I can have a great sex life for a little bit longer actually if I've got lube, but if you're just going to shove it in and I'm not particularly wet for whatever reason that may be, regardless how turned on I am, it's not going to be such a comfortable experience. And then it leads to us having negative thoughts in our head, which we really don't need, because to have the most amazing sex, you want to have a completely relaxed brain. <laughs> That's it for my tips on how to get your spark back, and now I've said them all, I'm so excited to see Leon. I also hope that you love as much as I do that this has been sponsored by KY Jelly. It's such an honor, and if you haven't tried this brand before or this lube, I've linked it below so you can check it out. It's recommended by doctors. It's suitable for everyday use. It will not stain your sheets or wherever you choose to use it. It is water-based, so it will help with vagina dryness. It's perfume-free and a very gentle formula, so you will be very happy when you use it. Trust me, and let me know how you get on. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you all soon.